and members of the Ukrainian delegation. In the early hours of the 24th of February last year, we were all shocked to learn that the Russian aggressor had invaded parts of Ukraine. The free world will never, will for always remember this day as a day of shame for Russia. The Danish parliament stands in solidarity with Ukraine. You can rest assured that we will continue to do so. Ukraine must prevail in its struggle for freedom. Denmark and Ukraine share the same values of democracy and nation's right to self-determination ensured in the United Nations Charter. Your visit underscores the strong bonds that exist between our two nations. On behalf of all my colleagues, of all the members of the Danish parliament, it gives me great pressure to say that Ukraine has our full, uh, you have our full support, our deepest respect and sympathy. All the political parties in Denmark are unified when it comes to military, financial and humanitarian support to Ukraine. Ukraine belongs to the European family. UK, Ukraine's struggle is therefore also Denmark's struggle. Together with millions, I have noticed your remark, I need ammunition, not a right. It says a lot about your personal uh, character and your determination to win the war for Ukraine, for your people, for freedom. Mr. President, I've never met you before in person, but somehow it seems to me that I already know you pretty well. I have, like my colleagues in this room, I've seen you many times on uh, television and I have the utmost respect for your dedicated leadership in these difficult times for your country. You are a guiding star for your people in Ukraine, for the people around the world. You addressed the members of uh, the Danish uh, parliament by a video link more than 14 months ago. At that time, the members saw you on the video screen in the very same room where we are today. Now we have the pressure to meet you in real life and it's a great privilege we are eager to learn more about the current situation in ukraine mr president the floor is yours welcome Thank you so much. You don't need it, I will speak in English. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Prime Minister, Madam, dear members of Folketing and Government Diplomats, everyone who is here today and, and of course journalists, those who make possible that one nation, one nation, great nation, here in very concretic moment, very important moment, the soul of another. Dear people of Denmark, today I'm here to say, and I'm with my wife, with my team, we are here to say thank you personally. Thank all of you for helping us in our fight, difficult fight for freedom, for helping us in this war which Russia brought to our land and which it wants so much, still wants to throw in the homes of other nations. And I'm sure you can see that. Now, Russian evil strikes with pain and death at Ukrainian cities and villages. But they openly say that Ukraine is not enough. Later, after our country, they want to carry this suffering further to Europe and to the world. And I'm sure 
you hear it, you hear it from Moscow. All of Russia's neighbors are under threat if Ukraine does not prevail. International law will not be resuscitated. Democracies of the world, each of them can become a target either for missiles or for mercenaries or for destabilization and I'm sure you can feel it. But Ukraine will prevail. And I want you to see it, hear it, feel it. Ukraine will prevail. And These are not just words. It is a fact that follows from what we believe, we Ukrainians, Danes, all Europeans, every nation that stands with us, stands against blows, the blows of the war and will stand further. When Putin ordered this invasion, he only believed in the lens of his armed vehicles column. In power of explosions of Russian missiles, he believed that cruelty is capable of rewriting the history of an entire continent, erasing this history, pushing it back a century, yes, to crush everything that makes our continent and our countries peaceful. He believed only in force, in force without humanity. He trusted violence, and that is why he is weaker. We believe in something completely different, and that is why we become stronger, all of us, together with you. Thank you. We believe, we believe in human solidarity and in fact it allows us to destroy any column of any equipment of any occupier. Because when you have people on your side, right side, when humanity is a value for you and when your values match the values of other nations, you will definitely find all the necessary weapons to defend yourself, how we do, how we defend ourselves, in particular with your help. And I thank you, really thank you from all the Ukrainians, from all of us. Thank you, Denmark, for your solidarity. Thank you for your help, all the help provided to Ukraine. Thank you for Hapoons. <laughs> Russians afraid. Uh, thank you. Caesars. Leopards. Breadless. Drones. Yes, they afraid drones. And artillery. And thank you. Thank you for the mining machines. All this service freedom service in this very moment, service to protect people's lives, people, life. This is what we believe in. When you defend people's right to life, you are joined by others who value life, and this makes you together invincible. And I thank you, Denmark, for helping Ukraine to become invincible. That is for you, thank you so much. Ukraine, Ukraine is moving from javelins and stingers to Petros and F-16s. F-16s, thank you very much. Uh, uh, 
Denmark. Denmark, thank you for F-16. There, there was a time when, when they said that this would never happen and uh, when they said we shouldn't fight and when they different, didn't believe in us, didn't believe in you, didn't believe in people and said that it was easier to freeze and desire to live. The desire to live, but humanity turned into solidarity solidarity turned into leadership, in particular your leadership, Denmark. And it is leadership that multiplies our collective strengths. People value strengths, strengths helps, but strengths is not always primary. Strengths is a consequence, consequence of who you are and who is with you whom you respect and who respects you, whom you want to see in your home and who wants to see you, whom you trust and who trusts you. We trust you, Denmark. Thank you. Full-scale Russian naval is retreating now under the blows of those whom Russia has always only despised. And despising was wrong. But people are, are not being wrong now when they despise it, such Russia, which spreads evil, which does not even distinguish between whom to kill, whom to kill today, child or soldier which wants to change the law with violence, which went against us, which went against all of us, and to which we together give one answer, we will prevail. Ladies and gentlemen, dear people of Denmark, Ukraine believed in you when this civil invasion began, and I thank you for trusting us. When I addressed you, address you online for, for the first time from Kiev in March 2022, and when no one could yet say what would happen next. My address was based on confidence, on confidence in you. And I asked for leadership, and you are the leaders, and I asked for support in overcoming this disaster brought by the war and you support Ukraine with everything that is needed. And I addressed you saying that we need to, th to think not only about war. We, now, we know there will be peace. We know it and we know we can get back to normal, normal life, what we liked and what we loved. And I'm grateful to you for the fact that you are already already helping Ukraine with reconstruction. Thank you so much, Meta, and uh, in particular to our um, our uh, city Mykolaiv, over which Denmark took patronage. You will deliver on your promise. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I addressed you at the beginning of the full-scale war, but I, but I already knew that you would not give, give in to fear. And you defend your principles, our values, and the future of Europe, free, peaceful, and what is very important, united. Europe in which we will always be united only by cooperation within the European Union, within NATO, and cooperation between us on a bilateral level, and we will never, never be divided by the evil of any occupation or any totalitarian cotton. Because we will always protect our freedom and never lose our faith, faith in people, in humanity, 
and in each other. We will always help each other to prevail, no matter what happens. And let this be another of, of our Copenhagen criteria. The criteria of those who win. Thank you. Thank you, Denmark. Thank you, Denmark. Thanks to you all. Great people. Almost our relatives. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for, for our refugees. Thank you that you so warmly host them like a family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, dear members of uh, Falketing, Prime Minister. So, dear, dear Mr. President, I think the reaction speaks for itself. Thank you very much for a very inspiring speech. As I said before, our hearts goes out for the Ukrainian people. Uh, you will meet some of those wonderful people uh, later this uh, this morning. So in a few seconds we will leave the room and you will have the opportunity to address some of uh, the members of parliament as well as other people for the civilian society. So once again, dear Mr. President, thank you very much for your speech and again a warm welcome and please you can escort me to the center of the universe, at least the Danish universe, and that's just out here. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel.
You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.